one is entitled How to Obtain a Law Degree. And uh, this how-to guide can be used for a variety of different degrees or qualifications or exams or things that you are studying for. It is not simply for law, but I'm using my own experiences as a means of helping and guiding you. So let's begin. Step one. Step one. It helps to have some form of interest in the subject that you are studying. I've always thought that the sort of person who should do a law degree is some form of career criminal or somebody who wants to be a gangster when they grow up because, after all, you need to know the law to break the law. Not that I'm condoning breaking the law, stealing or something, but unless you're stealing from banks or the government, who are virtually the same person, in which case it's fine. I didn't just say that. I am wearing clothes, by the way. I'm not naked. Just so you know. I'm not that weird. I don't just sit here with a lawyer's wig on and glasses and nothing else. Maybe I do. Step two. It helps if you are extremely wealthy or have a family who are lawyers. Because you will need to buy about a thousand textbooks, of which they each cost about £19,000, unless you can get hand-me-downs. Oh wait, no, but that doesn't work because they are updated every three and a half minutes, so no, you need to be wealthy, basically. You won't need these textbooks. You won't even read them. But they look good. And you look clever. And you can at least pretend to do some form of work. Step three, attend all your lectures. Whatever you do, don't sit at the back throwing things at the teacher, or just sleep through them. Not even bother to get up. You suddenly wake up at three o'clock in the afternoon and you've missed your entire day. That's what happens, apparently. Don't do that. Step four, make sure you stick to the time frame which your degree is set. For example, if your law degree takes three years, take three years. Don't take five years. Don't get through the gates of university and immediately think, oh, party. Party, party, party. Boys, party. Alcohol, drugs, party. Boys. And fail twice. Don't do that. Bad. Step five. Further probably to the last point. Spend your student loan wisely on things like books and paper and highlighters and nice notebooks and pencil cases and pens. But don't spend it on booze and drugs and entrance to clubs and shoes to get you in clubs short skirts to attract boys. It's bad, bad way to spend your money. Silly. Step six. Now this is a very good one. I would advise that it is very good to study throughout the year, not 24 hours before your final exam. Mainly because you will have to ply yourself with 14 cans of Red Bull to get yourself through it. By the time you have finished you have some sort of come down and self-induced coma for two weeks. Red Bull is evil. It is the devil. It's petrol. Don't drink it at all, actually. Don't drink 14 cans in one night. Bad, bad move. Doesn't help your grades either. Step seven. Perform all exams completely sober. Don't have a puff on a doobie or a glug of booze beforehand to calm nerves or things like that. Well, actually, you know, sometimes it works for some people. Maybe we scrap that one. Do whatever you feel is best. Just don't get drunk or vomit on your paper. That's just nasty. Step eight. Mix with the correct people. The sort of people who go to lectures all the time and have early nights and don't go out and wear pullovers. These are the people you need to mix with. Not people that you like, that will eventually go to a lecture with you and then leave halfway through on the premise of going to get a coffee and then you do nothing but drink coffee and smoke cigarettes for the rest of the week. They're bad people. These people are bad. They're lovely, but they're bad. Alternative step eight. Step eight. Don't use your womanly wiles to get better grades or your male wiles. For example, if you're doing a mock court case and you're all dressed up in your nice gown and suit and you're in front of a judge and whatnot, I would not suggest falling over and flashing your pants at the judge. It may work, but then again it may not. If your judge is gay, waste of time. Waste of time and people will laugh at you forevermore. Apparently, this is what happens. Step nine. Get yourself a very good part-time job. Preferably one that's like in a shop where you can sell clothes in the afternoon hours or in the morning hours. What I would not suggest 
is getting a job that makes you work at night time, probably in a club where you're some sort of cocktail bar hall. You don't finish till three o'clock in the morning and then you meet these nice boys and they say, oh, come back to our house. We have after parties. These things are the devil. You will never get up again. You will never know what morning time looks like if you stay with these people and work in these jobs. It's bad. It's great fun, but it's bad. Bad for degrees. And finally, step 10. Once you have finally managed to make it to the end of this disastrous, lengthy, depressing, wonderful time of studying for your law degree, take this law degree that you've finally received and throw it out the window and do something completely different, like TV presenting. An excellent way to waste five years of your life. I'm not sad. I don't regret it. It's fine. But that's... These are my tips, this is my how-to guide, this is what you must do. And it's important because you should take this advice on board from somebody who knows. Bar the boozy drug bit, which of course I don't know anything about, but I hear these things. This is all hearsay, it's all apparently. So there you are, I hope you've liked that one. It was rather a quick one, I'm sorry, but the sun's out and this never happens in England, so I'm going. If you like what you've seen, if you have any ideas of what you'd like me to do next on How To Guides, let me know. I And uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll see you next week. Toodaloo. Bye bye, Sansa. Bye. I, look, I can't even speak. I have a law degree and I can't speak. <laughs>